guys, it's me, Jessica DeLeon, and welcome and welcome back to my channel. Please don't forget to subscribe and go check me out on Instagram and now TikTok. We're going to be talking about some taboo uh, topics, but necessary nonetheless, because women's issues are very important and we shouldn't be ashamed of them. We shouldn't stray away from it, not get the help that we need, not speak up, not say what we need to say, um, especially if it's debilitating to your life and affecting your mental health, because this can affect your mental health just as much as it can affect you physically. It's a very aggravating, annoying thing to have to live with, especially when you have no answers, no cures, and Doctors don't seem to know anything or have any real concrete answers for you. We're talking about reoccurring bacterial vaginosis infections or bacterial vaginosis, and we're talking about chronic itch. Let's start off by talking about BV, okay, bacterial vaginosis. So what is bacterial vaginosis? Your vagina is usually populated by good and bad bacterias. Lactobacilli are the good bacterias and anaerobes are the bad bacterias. And when something upsets the natural balance of these good and bad bacterias, that is when you get a bacterial vaginosis infection. When the bad bacteria come in and overpopulate the vagina. And specifically, it usually is vaginosis cardinella bacteria okay it is actually the most predominant bacteria that lives in your vagina okay. so that's essentially what happens there's going to be itching there's going to be burning when you're urinating there's going to be inflammation in the vagina where it's going to be kind of uh, inflamed and red and irritated on the in and outside it can be itchy on the in and outside and it can come with a kind of grayish discharge and sometimes it can also come with a foul, fishy odor. And that can be very strong. So strong, in fact, that it can go through your clothes and other people can smell it. Now, unlike a yeast infection, it's harder to self-diagnose bacterial vaginosis because, yes, you can test for your pH. Now, the uh, natural pH of a vagina is going to be between 3.8 and 4.5, which is moderately acidic. Usually what the data has shown that women who are testing positive for BV are usually somewhere between 4.9 and 5. So as you can tell, it's ever so slightly off. That is enough to cause a bacterial vaginosis infection. With a testing strip, you can test to see if your uh, vagina pH is in that 4.9 to 5 range, and that can give you a pretty good clue that you may be having bacterial vaginosis. The fishy odor is a dead, dead giveaway. But bacterial vaginosis infections do not always come with that odor. I've had bacterial vaginosis infections before where they have had that odor and not had that odor, and I've tested positive both ways. That's not always a symptom of bacterial vaginosis. Mainly what you want to do is go to the doctor and get tested. They will do a swab, send it to the lab, and then they will let you know whether or not you have bacterial vaginosis. Uh, there is no at-home at testing that I know of currently that you can uh, do to do bacterial vaginosis test. Now, I know you can get an at-home kit to do it yourself and then send it off to a lab and have the results come back to you without having to go to the doctor. It's not an immediate result, and those are pretty expensive. So if you have insurance, try and do it that way or find a clinic that will, uh, a women's health clinic that either does it low cost. There are some free clinics also that may test for STDs and things like that. It's important to note that bacterial vaginosis is not an STD, okay? It's just an imbalance of good and bad bacteria, mainly bad bacteria. So that's what BV is and that's how it's diagnosed. What causes BV or bacterial vaginosis? Well, a a lot of things can cause bacterial vaginosis. Having unprotected sex with multiple partners, you're gonna be more susceptible and prone to bacterial vaginosis infections. Smoking, sugar, bacteria like sugar. So high sugar diets, eating a lot of sugar, cause bacterial vaginosis. Sweating, stress, douching, 
just a natural lack of lactobacilli bacteria or the good bacteria in your vagina. If your natural vagina environment does not um, produce enough good bacteria, you're more likely to develop bacterial vaginosis as well. Antibiotics is another one. So like say if you're taking it for something else, you have an infection, like recently I had an infection here on my, on my gum and I had to take amoxicillin. So that is another reason that you can get a bacterial vaginosis infection. So there's lots of reasons and I'll just put a list here so that you can pause and take a look at just to know what all of the different things are. If there was something in there that I forgot, cause there's just so many things that can cause it unfortunately. Something else that I want to mention is that black women are disproportionately affected by BV. And I'm sorry for you brown, brown skinned women, Hispanic women like myself, Native American women like myself, were not included in this study or in this data. So I don't have um, any answers to use where you fall on this. Okay, and BV is more common among, among women of reproductive age as well. And about half of all black women of reproductive age, black women are twice as like, likely to have BV compared to white women. The most important group of bacteria when women need women need for a healthy vagina is called lactobacillus. Lactobacillus is responsible for creating acidic, which keeps uh, the pH of the vagina low. This is important because it helps prevent unhealthy bacteria from growing. And studies show the vagina of white women are more likely to be dominated by lactobacillus crispatus. On the other hand, black women are likely to have diverse vaginal flora of vaginal bacteria dominated by lactobacillus inners. Women with higher lactobacillus cupatus levels generally have lower vaginal pH, more acidic than women with lactobacillus inners, black women. This leaves black women with fewer vaginal protective barriers and higher infection rates. And also another thing that black women are uh, faced with are lower vitamin D levels. That is also linked to greater uh, BV infections. Melanin found in darker skin people can lower the body's ability to absorb sunlight, which is a key step in making vitamin D. So you may want to be adding a vitamin D supplement to your routine. So that's a little information about um, black women. What about women like myself who have had problems with reoccurring or chronic bacterial vaginosis infections. So let's say you get a bacterial vaginosis infection and you're prescribed the five day inserts. Okay, this is a five day treatment. It's got a little tool in there where you can put it on the end of the tube and squeeze it in there. Let's just say you do that and it starts to get a little better, but after the five days, you still are having an infection. What do you do then? Well, you go back to your doctor and you tell them that they need to prescribe you more. Because if you're having reoccurring bacterial vaginosis infections, you need to be doing this for at least one month. Okay, and that is what some data has shown, is that for four weeks, you need to be doing this not for five days and now they also prescribe not only metrodonazole vaginal gel but they also prescribe clindamycin phosphate this is actually my acne medication uh off-label use for clindamycin uh, phosphate which is another antibiotic is to treat bacterial vaginosis you can also get metrodonazole uh in a pill form okay, that you can take as well. So you don't have to do the insert. So you need to try it for an entire month, either the pill or like I just showed you the gels for one whole month, okay? At least one month with just the antibiotics gave the participants an 82% cure rate, 82% just by doing this or the pill for four weeks. Let's just say you get to the four week point and you're still one of those women that you either have a very resistant strain or you have some kind of lowered immune or you may have just a lack of lactobacilli healthy uh, bacteria in your vagina. Those could be causes of why you continue to keep having reoccurrent ones or if you're doing if you're continuing to still doing anything on this list 
then that could also can be contributing to it. So it could be multiple factors that could be contributing to your having a bacterial a reoccurring or chronic bacterial vaginosis. Okay. And it's just all come to a head. And now you're one of those people that has reoccurring chronic bacterial vaginosis. And it's sad. It's horrible. It's awful. What if you're having bacterial vaginosis infection like symptoms, but you're testing negative because that is what's been happening to me. And it's happened to me multiple, multiple times. This is especially for the women who have chronic BV or reoccurrent BV. If you continue to have BV symptoms and test negative, you can have BV and test negative. If you're also testing negative for yeast and STDs, go ahead and get on the antibiotic treatment and support that with a boric acid suppository. Now, let's just say at four weeks, you're still having symptoms and you're still testing positive for BV at this point. And you're like, okay, what now? Do I have some super bug? Am I just gonna have to live with this for the rest of my life and be miserable forever? No. Then you wanna go ahead and do the gels or the pill, the metronidazole pill for seven weeks. So an additional three weeks but you're gonna to wanna to add in 600 milligrams of boric acid suppository in the vagina. Okay, this is one I got at Walmart for 20 bucks. So you're gonna do 600 milligrams of boric acid, the same stuff that kills pesky little uh, roaches, but this stuff really does work. So you wanna do that combination for seven weeks. And the cure rate at seven weeks is 88%. So let's just say that at seven weeks you're still testing positive and it's still completely itchy down there what do you do now so then you're going to do all of this or the pill for 12 weeks or three months and that has a cure rate of 92 percent okay and to manage symptoms like um the itching because the itching is like the worst part right you can get some rx Hopefully your uh, OBG or primary or PCP can um, prescribe you some prescription strength steroid cream. You should not use this for more than a week to two weeks because it thins the skin. After a week or two weeks, whatever your doctor suggests, mine said two, I've heard, so I've heard one, but mine said two, so I used it for two. After two weeks, then you wanna switch off to a over-the-counter anti-itch cream. Okay, and then after a little while, then you can go back on if you're doing the long-term treatment. Um, if you're just doing the five days and it's gone, then this will be perfect. But if you're doing long-term treatment for reoccurring BV, but you're having a hard time getting rid of, you're definitely gonna wanna use this for the full two weeks or as long as you can use it. Switch off, for, use this, and then go back on this because this stuff is really, really good and it works. Keep your vagina clean. If you're gonna use the wipe down there, Use a fragrance free wipe from L. And also I suggest that you wash with this monostat uh, or a boric acid um, vaginal wash. And this uh, has boric acid and it's also uh, fragrance free. If you're having a current infection, leave this on for like three minutes, put it down there, leave it on for three minutes, don't rinse it off and kind of let it do its thing on the outside. That will also help with getting rid of and cleaning away some of the uh, bacterial vaginosis infection. Um, so definitely do that as well. I also suggest while you're having a BV and even when you're not having a BV, if you're actually able to finally get rid of it, take a probiotic. And my OBG did suggest a probiotic. So do take a daily probiotic. Another thing that my OBGYN um, suggested is an allergy pill. Take a daily allergy pill to help with itching. It really does help, okay? You want to be taking a supplement, washing every day with boric acid to your routine to help prevent bacterial vaginosis, okay? That will really help um, kind of keep the bacterial vaginosis at bay, okay? If you're not having a current infection and you're worrying about a recurrent infection. That's all I have for you on bacterial vaginosis and chronic bacterial vaginosis and how to treat it, what causes it, and how to manage the itching and prevent it. Okay, so let's get on to the second thing, chronic itch. Okay, now if you're testing negative like I have been for everything under the sun, including BV, what else could it possibly be? Well, 
I'll put a list of things here that it could possibly be. Um, you can have things like an eczema on your vagina. Vagina skin can get pimples. It's allergies. It, don't think just because of vagina skin that it can't. It can. I'm going to specifically, because of what I have experience in, be concentrating on the allergy portion of chronic itch. How do you get an allergy? Or how do you even know that you have an allergy? So you're, you're, you're testing negative for everything, right? And you're still having this this itching 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 all the time so this itching can be due to an allergy i a long time ago used to always wear scented panty liners you're you're using scented tampons you're using the scented sprays you're using different things that have a lot of scent in them and over many many years of doing all of this eventually you start having chronic itch because you've developed a fragrance allergy from all of these scented products that you've been using. And now not only are you allergic to the fragrance, you're allergic to all of the things that were in with the fragrance in the ingredients. It is a co-sensitizer. It is going to make you allergic not only to it, the fragrance, but to everything else that was in there. It's a possibility that it can make you allergic to all the other things that were also in the ingredients with the fragrance. So now you're allergic to all kinds of stuff. You've got uh, a sensitive vagina now. How do you know it's an allergy? How is it diagnosed? Well, unfortunately, from what I have experienced talking to an OBGYN, multiple OBGYNs, you can't. It's not like a dermatologist test that you can go and get and they do it little tests on the skin to see what you're allergic to. They don't have the same kind of thing for a vagina. Apparently that just doesn't exist. So you kind of have to just infer it with your lifestyle, the things that you've been doing and come to that conclusion. And that's kind of the conclusion that me and my OBGYN came to was that I probably have a very sensitive vagina and probably are dealing with some allergies. Now there is something called the scratch itch cycle. Once there's the itch, you have to scratch it. Once you scratch it, then the itch comes. There's the itch, then you have to scratch. So you get into this scratch itch cycle that is awful. It is demoralizing and you just don't even feel like a person or a woman. You wonder what's happening to you. Well, it happens. It happens to some of us. Some of us are just more sensitive than others and especially to fragrance. And don't think because you used fragrance once or twice or you've been using it for a while that you, nothing happened that you're okay contact dermatitis or fragrance allergies are one of the one of the main skin issues that dermatologists see in their practice you know i would stay away from any type of fragrance absolutely 100 percent. okay so that's kind of how you know there's really no way to diagnose okay so what do you do when you know or you think that you have a chronic itch due to allergy basically you just have to manage your symptoms there's really no cure for it you've basically ruined your vagina with using all those scented things and there's really no going back at this point you're going to have the allergy pretty much forever so you just have to avoid the things that um you notice are causing you to have a lot of itch because i'm a penny liner wearer i use the l brand uh, fragrance free Panty liners, these are the uh, no synthetic pesticides, chlorine bleach, dyes and fragrances, 100% uh, uh, pure cotton top layer. Another thing to help with managing your um, itchiness is to take a daily allergy pill, just like you would if you had a nasal allergy. This definitely, definitely helps me. I just put it in my routine and I never really have to worry about itch too much. Okay, so you want to also do fragrance free vagina washes <clears throat> anything with uh, no fragrance in it is really going to be what you're going to want to get if you're going to wash your vagina so definitely a fragrance free vagina wash if you're going to wipe your vagina uh, if you're not able to wash it but you need to just wipe it really quickly to get it clean if you're on the go or uh, are not able to shower definitely be using fragrance free wipes this is the L brand ones that I showed you earlier, just like the panty liners. And use a anti-itch cream. 
You can use also use the anti-itch wipes from Vagisil. Those also are good when you're having a kind of a flare up. Or you can also use a steroid cream. But like I said, if you have one already, don't use it for more than one to two weeks if you're having an allergy flare up. This can be bad. It can thin the skin. Okay, guys. So that's all I have for you for chronic itch when it pertains to having an allergy and how to diagnose it and how to treat it. So that is it guys. I hope this video helps someone out there who's experiencing BV, chronic BV, and chronic uh, vaginal itch due to allergy. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the future. Love y'all.